Go ahead, Jeff. City's burning. There ain't a thing in the whole wide world they can do. I said the Motor City's burning, baby. There ain't a thing in God's wide sky they can do. My whole town is burning down to the ground. Worse than. Vietnam. It started on 12th and Claremont that morning on the near west side, just down the street from the Chit Chat Lounge, home of the Funk Brothers and Willie Metcalf, and not far from the Club 12. Formerly known as Klein Show Bar, where Yusef Latif and his men held court for many years. On the second floor of a house, like many others, where people got together after hours, they called them blind pigs, where people got together to drink and gamble without a license. Four o'clock in the morning, and there were 85 people in the pad celebrating the homecoming from Vietnam of two brothers from the neighborhood. And they were having so much fun that the police bashed down the door and marched the offenders down the steps to load them into the police vans waiting down on 12th Street where people were walking home from a night out and witnessed the police loading their neighbors into the Black Mariahs and someone shouted, Black Power! Don't let them take our people away! I'm gonna baptize this motherfucker with a beer bottle. And the shit was on. It started on 12th and Claremont that morning. It made the beat cops jump and shout. You know it started on 12th and Claremont that morning. It made the pigs in the street freak out. The fire wagons, they kept coming, but the Black Panthers snipers wouldn't let them put it out. Wouldn't let them put it out. Wouldn't let them put it out.
carting home the groceries they've been paying their lives for all those years. Free furniture and color TV, guitars and leather coats, shoes and clothes and liquor. Get the big stuff. And when their energies turn from smashing the stores, they would go for the police. The dirty, rotten, hated police who had their hands around the necks of the African American population and squeezed at will. Or as the NAACP put it in 1965, the Negroes in Detroit feel they are part of an occupied country. The Negroes have no rights, which the police have to respect. It will appear that the average policeman looks upon the Negro as being a criminal type. Fire bombs bursting all around me, baby. Yes, and the soldiers were standing everywhere. The firebombs were bursting all around me. And the National Guard was everywhere. I could hear my people screaming. Sirens, fill the air. Fill the air, fill the air. But the Detroit Police Force But the Detroit Police Force 90% white Couldn't contain the rebellion And 8,000 Michigan Army National Guardsmen Were deployed with their tanks In the streets of Detroit Soon to be joined by 4,700 paratroopers from both the 82nd and the 101st Airborne Division, plus 360 Michigan State Police officers. They placed the city under curfew and started rounding up suspects until more than 7,200 people had been taken off the streets and stuffed into the jail, held in the bathhouse at Belle Isle, shipped to Jackson Prison, 80 miles away in buses, and housed on the floor of the penitentiary until the rebellion was suppressed and they were released. Four days of rioting and carnage, Sunday, July 23rd to Thursday, July 27th, 1967. 43 people killed, 1,189 injured, more than 2,000 buildings destroyed in the central city. But the damage was carefully directed at the objects of their oppression as inhabitants of the ghetto and at the police and troops who tormented them. And the people who were killed were gunned down by the police like the brothers at the Algiers Motel, the most fully documented of all the police atrocities 
that took place during the riot. Although there was no riot at the Algiers Motel, except for the police terrorism unleashed the victims. This was a rebellion, an uprising against racial oppression, segregated housing, the greedy landlords and businessmen who control their environment, the denial of economic opportunity, the refusal to provide proper education, and the relentless persecution by the police. No relief in sight, nothing to look forward to, no way.